Hey everybody, Chris here. So today we're going to go over five things I wish I would have done or known before I bought my first Class A motorhome. One of the things I wish I would have done was be more cautious around the RV dealer. Granted, my situation was a little bit different. Uh, I was basically getting a sponsorship from the dealership I was buying it from, from the marketing department. And it was going to be $250 a month. So in my head, I was thinking, why would they give me a bad RV uh, if they're going to be having me on their marketing team? Uh, but what I didn't realize is the salesman and the marketing director were on two completely different pages. The salesman, I think, was just trying to get a co-assignment in and out. And the marketing guy was looking just to get me in any coach and then just blog about my journeys and say I got it from the dealership I got it from. So that was a big disconnect for me. I was not I was never told it was a co-assignment. I was told that it was... Uh, it was 100% good to go, it was looked over, everything was in proper working order, but in reality, it wasn't even looked at from the previous owner. The previous owner drove it in, they waxed it, and then they put it on the lot, and that was essentially all that was. So, one thing I wish I would have done was be more cautious around the RV dealer, uh, less trusting of the RV dealer, and in, in your situation, uh, be cautious around uh, even private sellers, dealerships, always have a verified secondary opinion from a mechanic. The next three aspects is going to be closely tied to research that I wish I would have done. Uh, the second thing I wish I would have done um, was more research about financing. I did understand that banks took a portion of the loan. For example, for mine, I put money down, then I had a loan afterwards. And <clears throat> I wish I would have done more research on how the financing works. Um, if your particular loan, if you're paying towards the interest or you're paying towards the capital, because going into it, I didn't even think about it. I just, I just figured, you know, we'll, we'll take care of it when it comes to it. I'll, I'll have my monthly payments in, and it'll be fine. But I did no research beyond that. So when you were thinking about getting an RV, if you were going into the financing route, be sure that you know every aspect of your loan. I also wish I would have done more research on how uh, Class A motorhomes were built versus Class Cs and uh, Class Bs. Uh, I didn't realize that. You know, these safety-wise, up, up front, if you have a really big front-end collision, there's really not much there to protect you. Um, as you're going down the road, as you kind of go, uh, you know, over some bumps, you can hear the whole frame of the RV rocking back and forth. And those that watch my, my videos from the beginning, you know that, man, I was, I was like nervous when I first got this thing because I didn't know if that was a normal sound. And, you know, once you start driving these Class A motorhomes, once you start getting used to them, uh, that that sound in the back, you just it just becomes you know white noise. You don't hear it anymore. But I I had no idea how these things were built. Like these are just thin walls they put up with, you know, just a little bit of insulation in between, and then you're then you're on the way. Like this is a closet right here. That does not sound too solid. Uh, granted, we're, we're not we're not in the uh, the hundred thousand hundred. Well, that when this is brand new, it was one hundred twenty thousand dollars. But we're not into the three hundred fifty thousand dollar motorhomes that are solid wood. So I'm not not bashing this particular motorhome. I'm just saying I had no idea they were built like this. I also thought if I was getting a Class A, I'd be getting a beefier engine, uh, beefier suspension. But essentially, this Class A right here, it's a thirty two foot Class A. It's no different from a thirty two foot Class C. Uh, they're the same chassis. Uh, when the RV manufacturer gets them, um, it's a Ford chassis or a Chevy chassis, or even when you get the diesels. I know I don't know much about them yet. But I believe with the with the diesel chass chassis as well, it's just a steering wheel with an engine and then a flat base for the company to build on. And lastly, the aspects that I wish I would have researched comes down to common problems. So when I first got this, I had no idea of common problems with motorhomes. In my head, I thought if I got a newer motorhome that I wouldn't have much problems. That is completely false. Uh, when it really comes down to it, a motorhome is a living, breathing thing. Whenever it sits, whenever it's not taken care of, it dies. And it takes a long time to be in the motorhome, a long time to get things working the way they should be working. And there was a lot of work that I had to do on this when I first got it. Granted, it was a great education. Um, I learned so many things about this motorhome when we first got it. And I learned so much about RVs in general. When when I was in Seward, there was a, an, a couple that just bought a... a trailer and they couldn't get the hot water heater on through my trial and error I knew exactly what was going on they had no idea that there's a valve behind your water heater that opens up the hot water um, to let the water into the hot water heater they had no idea but from my trials and tribulations I figured that out and I went over there and helped them 
you know, it's it's just a learning process, and I wish I would have done more research on common problems that that we've had. You know, like uh, the alignment problems that we had. You know, you need to go to a good shop. You have to get a good shop to do your alignment. You can't do the seventy-five dollar alignment shops because you're gonna have problems like like I did. When it comes down to it, when you have a motor home, there's always gonna be something that needs to be fixed. Uh, my leveling jacks don't work. My awning is starting to rip a little bit. My windshield's cracked. There's always going to be something, especially if you're full-time and that needs to be fixed. And sometimes it's just not in the budget. So I wish I would have researched that and had a greater understanding of that. Lastly, the thing that I really wish I would have done was waited on a better deal. Granted, again, my situation was different than most people out there. Um, most people don't go to a dealership and then get a salary from the dealership after buying an RV. Uh, but I wish I would have maybe went to Texas or Florida and then found somebody's RV that they were already full-time living in. Uh, I think that's a big thing because a lot of the bugs that you're going to encounter if that motorhome wasn't lived in full-time, you're going to have to figure out yourself and you're going to have to get that, that stuff fixed because there, there's going to be a lot of stuff because when you're not in the motorhome full-time, for example, the leveling jacks. If you're not living full time, having the leveling jacks not work once or twice a month whenever you take the motorhome out, that's not a big deal. But when you're living in it and you sleep in it every single night, then you know that's something that's going to have to be fixed. So uh, the the last aspect I wish I would have uh, done more research on and maybe been more educated on was where to find the better deals and how to find them and what I was uh, looking for in a deal. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, be sure to leave it in the comments down below. Or if you have your own experiences where you bought a motorhome and you'd like to share, be sure to leave it in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. Catch you later.